What's up everybody? Got a question for you. Has the Daisy BB Gun Company ever had a slightly darker military side and covert ops side? Come with me. Let's go find out. Okay, so I got here after it closed yesterday and I said, I'm just gonna hang out. I'm not gonna ride this far and then not get what I want before I go back. Got three days off, so let's do it. So this morning, got up, got my coffee going and we're fixing to head out. In the late 1870s, there was this guy by the name of Clarence Hamilton, and he was an inventor. And he had moved from Ohio to uh, Plymouth, Michigan, and he had set up shop there. He was building these uh, veinless windmills. He had set up a shop fairly close to the house that was a pretty, pretty big shop and he was building these things and he was sending them out and they were going out by wagon and by railroad. Sending them out by wagon became really impractical uh, because of the areas he was sending them to. He was having to send them out by wagon and it was, it was expensive, it was difficult. And by the mid 1880s, uh, the business was the business was struggling. The board of directors for his business met and was considering liquidating the whole company. And that vote, uh, according to their records, failed by one vote. Now around the corner from the windmill company, Hamilton also operated the Plymouth Air Rifle Company, producing a wooden version of a BB gun. He got to thinking that the windmill company had everything that they needed to produce metal guns instead of the wooden ones. Now, in March of, 19, of 1888, Hamilton approached the windmill company uh, to manufacture an all metal BB gun of his own design. When he passed the air gun around to the different board members and everything, one of the guys said, you know, after shooting it, that it's a daisy. And at that time, they decided that the air gun was gonna be called a daisy. So what they did was they started manufacturing both the windmill and the air gun and they started including one air gun with every windmill sold. 
By 1895, the sales and popularity of the gun had grown to the point that the company ceased manufacturing at all of the windmills and began producing air guns exclusively and changed its name to the Daisy Manufacturing Company. Now, they continued business up there up until 1958 when they moved to Rogers, Arkansas, which is right here in Benton County. Uh, it's also in the same area with Bentonville, Arkansas. They started producing uh, different lines of the Daisy BB gun, including the Red Rider, which is the most popular uh, line of all the BB guns that they do. Little known fact is that uh, they also licensed the Winchester name and have produced air rifles to match that quality of name. They have a warehouse just outside of town that's a pretty good size warehouse. And they also have downtown at 202 West Walnut Street a museum. And it, of course, is the Daisy Museum. We're going to be going there in just a few minutes. But one of the things that you, you might find interesting is that it's in the museum and the warehouse and everything is in the same county, Benton County, as Bentonville, Arkansas. Bentonville, Arkansas is also the home to Walmart and their largest sales outlet for all of the Daisy products is of course Walmart. Now Rogers is a little town about the size of my hometown, Noonan, Georgia, and a lot of it reminds me of Noonan, with the exception of Noonan doesn't have cobblestone streets, it doesn't have a national airport, so I guess <laughs> It only looks like Nuna, but nothing else is the same. Butterfield Overland Mail Route from St. Louis to San Francisco came right through here. The first stop was at Callahan's Tavern, which was about a half a mile from here. Also, it, Callahan's Tavern has now been moved from where it was to right here on the corner here. It was the first relay station where teams were changed out after entering Arkansas from the Missouri. And uh, the stage arrived here at about 7 o'clock in the morning on September 18, 1858. The Frisco Rail Line also came through here. Down by the park, they even have one of the cabooses from the Frisco Rail Line uh, on display. You can actually go in it and you can uh, also share it uh, off of a couple of different apps. Uh, one of be the hashtag Frisco Park and Hasco and hashtag uh, Rogers Rock.
The Daisy Air Rifle Company was started by Clarence Hamilton in 1870. Working alongside of Clarence was L.C. Huff, who was the general manager of the windmill shop. He's the one that called the gun a daisy. Now, L.C.'s grandson, Cass Huff, was president of the company by the late 1950s and 60s. Cass Huff was extremely active in the Army Air Corps during World War II, and Daisy even found innovative ways to assist in the war effort by designing, building, and supplying the military with realistic weapon simulators. But Cass Huff and Daisy didn't stop there when the war was over. In 1961, Cass purchased plans for a new type of firearm, a caseless 22, meaning it had no primer or case on the ammo, just the lead and a high-powered cellulose. And the gun had a compressed air chamber, no bolt, no ejector, no ejector port. And after seven years of refining, in 1968, he rolled out the Daisy VL Caseless 22. There are still versions of this design being made today. I'm going to let you decide for yourself what applications could be used with a caseless ammo. Then in the early 80s, Cass came out with a firearm that has changed long-range military shooting in a drastic way. Daisy purchased a newly designed weapon built around a previously used military cartridge, the Browning 50 Cal. The original name of the weapon was the Browning Model 1500 Special Application. We are talking about the first 50 Cal single shot sniper rifle for the U.S. Navy SEALs. Daisy renamed it the Model 600 and offered it in the 50 cal, in the 14.5 millimeter, and the 12.7 by 108 millimeter. It was used into the 1990s and was replaced with weapons such as the Barrett 50 cal. Daisy introduced the Red Rider in the 1930s, and even today, it's the mainstay of the company. In 1958, the company moved to Rogers, Arkansas, and between 1993 and the present, the company has been acquired twice and has now been combined with Gamo Outdoors. No matter how you feel about weapons, toy or real, you can't discount the fact that Daisy has always been an all-American company providing an all-American product. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Smash it or crash it as we say. Always remember to subscribe. That's right over here. Go ahead, hit it. And then also hit the bell so that you'll know when we have a new upload every week. Have a great day. And remember, every trip starts with a step. And that step starts with you.